I'm talking here to uh, Alok Batra for Atomicon, and he is really into something popular here in the Valley in the Internet of Things. Uh, Alok, where did you uh, work for before? I was part of GE as a CTO for their Global Software Center, where we uh, we build their Predix platform for industrial internet. Yeah, but you also were a CTO at Cisco, and you had a, your own startup, and you've been with the Valley forever before you came. Uh, More than 22 years. Yeah. Okay. So now the Internet of Things. I mean, at GE, of course, everybody was really interested in uh, in helping it. So your experience in GE made you start this startup. What what does it exactly do? Yeah, we, we looked into the problem not just from the OEM perspective where GE's interest is, but looking more from the customer point of view, like how do they manage the operation side in the IoT uh, technology space. Like if I have multiple machines from different vendors and different sensors, how do I create a smart systems out of them? And that's where we focus on. Yeah. So they made a software platform where lots and lots of uh, IoTs are being managed at the right level. And uh, let's take a look at that. So what do I see here? Yeah, our approach is that don't take IoT as a as a new data and do analytics on top. What we see is that IoT means that you should be able to do more processing on the uh, on the edges, uh, sense and respond, and then do the macro workflows on the cloud and make it more process and analytics combined together and not just analytics. So you have a layered approach. What layers do I see here? We provide the middleware between things and applications. So we divide into the three layers to create the abstraction. The first layer, which which captures the, the device logic in the thing facets. The modeling layer, where you define the models. And then whatever you model becomes available into thing query language, which is the language for interacting with the things. Very similar to SQL, which is for interacting with the data. So the first project is in uh, Chicago, where they work together with uh, Cisco. And uh, where what kind of services do you provide there? So we provide the, the platform for, uh, for their city digital platform. And uh, in this, we basically allow them to connect to any southbound sensor provider, whether it is uh, GE, Philips, or any of them, and uh, let developers build the applications which are agnostic to any sensor and devices. So in this case, you are, it can be smart parking, smart light, traffic, transit, all those are different examples in smart cities. So you also work with trucks. What is the deal there? We make the trucks programmable. So like most of the trucks currently can generate a lot of data from the cloud and then you can create a tracking kind of application. In our example, we basically put the compute in the truck itself so that you can run the policies in the truck. So like if the if the temperature goes up, what to do with the AC, if the driver goes away, what to do. So that all can be done on the truck itself. And then you only push the fleet related information to the cloud. So now your truck becomes smart. But you also so you do a lot of local stuff and uh, and then you uh, and then you push it to the cloud. But you can also uh, reprogram the uh, the hardware in the truck to add all kinds of sensors eh, and to do over the air software upgrades. That's our forte. Like we do everything through the uh, through the in the through the content. So you can create new models. You can create uh, you can connect with new sensors. You can change the policies through the cloud. But they're all getting executed on the on the edges itself. Okay, let's look a little bit at these uh, little uh, sensors. So they've designed their own hardware, and this uh, USB uh, powered supply is a uh, is a uh, smart uh, gateway. What is it? And, and if you see it in a truck, how would that work? So, like if in this truck, if let's say if cab goes away from the uh, from the trailer, the the notification can be sent it to the operator or to the driver, and uh, same. Yeah, way can you take the trailer away? It's now connected. You take it away. And then it automatically censored that the truck is uh, going away, and that is being uh, and that is being pushed into the cloud. Yes, that's right. So it will it will be not only it will send in information to the driver, but it can be send it to the cloud itself. Okay, we also have agricultural example. What is this? So here you have the uh, the soil uh, sensors, you have the temperature sensor, humidity sensor, which is giving all the information about the the field. Uh, to, to the uh, to the to uh, the what we call zone neuron, and then on that basis we calculate what's the pesticide uh, quantity and what is the fertilizer quantity which need to be provided, and that information gets used by the sprayer which will be on the farmer's backpack or it will be in the machine. 
So since this is a pretty agnostic system, uh, you can also use it in healthcare. What do you use it here for? So in the healthcare, they are currently utilizing it to uh, to track their devices. So like not only the where they are, but what is the current state of the devices, who are using it, uh, what is being used for, and if they're available, then uh, then basically making it better use of the devices in the hospital environment. And then at the end of the year, making a decision which devices they should be investing more and which devices they should be uh, not buying any new devices. Yeah. What is this box here? I recognize this. So this is the Intel. Uh, this is the the Cisco IoT gateway where we are putting our software on top of it. So Atos, you are now doing this in. Uh, you have a nice project in uh, in Chicago, and it's running now. When? How long have you been involved in that project? So we started working with Cisco in in August of last year, and by October we were up and running for smart lighting, parking, and pedestrian traffic. In a couple of months. Yes, very much. And uh, Chicago. I mean, you have smart parking places which report if they're free. Street parking. Yes, yeah. this is for the street parking. And Sm smart lighting. Yeah, which is basically the context-based lighting. So it's in the intensity can change depending upon how many people are around mm -hmm. and whether cars are parked or not parked. Okay. In two free months. That is really fast. Okay, that Cisco could never have had by, by themselves alone. Yes, that's right. That's where they needed the partner like ourselves. When did you start the company? We started in 2013 of July. Okay, so you were nicely on time before the whole IoT craze uh, came about. Yeah, we are the one, one who started in GE and then now we are making it completed. Yeah. <laughs> What's your plan with the company? Uh, we surely want to take it to all the way to the uh, to one of the major players in the IoT platform and we have everything which is required to, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And you also worked with Jan Ban together. Huh? How do you work together with him? So with Jan Ban, we are looking into the peop people side of the workflow so that as, as we are more fix like working on the workflows of the machines and when the people come in, this is where the Jan's companies play the role. Okay, just uh, my first company which I visited, Atonicom. Internet of Things platform made uh, generalistic and also I think, uh, how did you call your language, the Q? Think query language. So, like, what you need when you need SQL to to manipulate the data, you need the tickle to to manipulate the things. Yeah, the things query language. Okay, Mountain View.